Hello everyone, my name is Han. I'm 10 years old and today I will continue reading Harry Potter and the Loveless of Fire by J.K. Rowling, illustrated by Jim K. Chapter 17, The Four Champions. Harry sat here, aware that every head in the great hall had turned to look at him. He was stunned. He felt numb. He was surely, he was surely dreaming. He had not heard correctly. There was no applause, a buzzing as though an angry beast was starting to fill the hall. Some students were standing up to get a better look at Harry as he sat frozen in his seat. Up at the top table, Professor McGonagall had got to her feet and swept past Ludo Batman and Professor Cockrell to whisper urgently to Professor Dumbledore, who bent his ear towards her, frowning slightly. Harry turned to Ron and Hermione beyond them. He saw the long Gryffindor table and all watching him, open mouth. I didn't put my name in, ha Harry said blankly. You know I didn't. Both of them stared his, blank, his blankly back. At the top table, Professor Dumbledore had just straightened up, nodding to Professor McGonagall. Harry Potter, he called again. Harry, up here if you please. Go on, Hermione whispered, giving Harry a push. Harry got to his feet and trotted to the hem of trot on the hem of his rose and stumbled slightly. He stepped off up the gap between the Gryffindor and the Hufflepuff table. It felt like an immensely long walk. The top table didn't seem to get any near up, and he could feel hundreds and hundreds of eyes upon him as as though each was a searchlight. The buzzing grew louder and louder. After what seemed like an hour, he was right in front of Dumbledore, feeling the stares of all the teachers upon him. Well, to the door, Harry, said Dumbledore. He wasn't smiling. Harry moved along the teacher's table. Hagrid was sitting right at the bed. At the end, he did not wink at Harry or wave, or give any of his usual signs of greeting. Harry looked completely astonished and stared at Harry astonished and stared at Harry as he passed. He and like everyone else. Harry went through the door out of the great hall and found himself in a smaller room lined with paintings of witches and wizards. A handsome fire was roaring in the fireplace opposite him. The faces in the portraits turned to look at him as he entered. He saw a wizard which flit out of the frame of her picture and into the one next to it, which contained a wizard with a walrus moustache. The wizard which started whispering in his ear. Victor Crumb, Cedric Diggory, and Fleur de la Cour was grouped around the fire. They looked strangely impressive, silhouetted against the flames. Crumb Handtrap and Brodding was leaning against the mantelpiece, slightly apart from the other two. Cedric was standing with his hand, his hands behind the hall, behind his back, staring into the fire. Fro de la Cour looked around when Harry walked in and threw back her sheet of long silver hair. What is it? she said. Do they want us back in the hall? She thought he had come to deliver a message. Harry didn't know how to explain what has just happened. He stood there looking at the three champions. It struck him how very tall all of them were. There was a sound of scurrying feet behind them. And Ludo Batman entered the room. He looked at Harry. He took Harry by the arm and led him forward. Extraordinary, he muttered, squeezing Harry's arm. Absolutely extraordinary. Gentlemen and ladies, he added, approaching the fireside and addressing the other three. May I introduce incredibly, though it may seem the fourth child wizard champion? Peter Crumb straightened up his surly face, darkened as he surveyed Harry. Cedric looked nonplussed. He looked at Batman from Harry and back again as though he was not as though he had not heard misheard what the Batman had said. Flo de la Cujawa. However, tossed her hair, said, smiling, and said, Oh, very funny joke, Mr. Batman. 
Joke, Batman repeated, bewildered. No, not at all. Harry Snape had just come out of the goblets of fire. Crumb's thick eyebrow contracted slightly. Cedric was still looking politely bewildered. Fleur frowned. But evidently, there has been a mistake, she said contemptuously to Batman. He cannot compete. He's too young. Well, it is amazing, said Batman, rubbing his smooth chin and smiling down at Harry. But as you know, the age restriction was only imposed this year as an extra safety measure. I mean, I don't think there can be any ducking out of the stage. It's down in the rules, you're obliged. Harry will just have to do the best. He, The door behind him opened again and a large group of people came in. Professor Dumbledore followed closely by Mr. Crouch, Professor Cockroft, Madam Maxime, Professor McGonagall, and Professor Snape. Harry heard a buzzing of hundreds of students out on the other side of the wall before Professor McGonagall closed the door. Madam Maxime, said Fleur de la Cour at once, striding over to her headmistress. headmistress. They are saying that this little boy is going to compete also. Somewhere under Harry's numb disbelief, he felt a ripple of anger. Little boy? Madame Maxine has drawn herself up to a full and considerably height. The top of her handsome head brushed against the candle-filled chandelier, and her gigantic black satin bosom well swelled. Is what is the meaning of this, Dumbledore? She said imperiously. I'd rather like to know that myself, Dumbledore, said Professor Cuthbert. He was wearing a steely smile, and his blue eyes were like chips of ice. Two Hogwarts champions. I don't remember any, anyone telling me the host is going to allow two champions, or have I hadn't read the rules carefully enough. He gave a short and nasty laugh. That's impossible, said Madame Massim, whose enormous hand was, with its many superb opals, was resting upon Fleur's shoulder. Up was kind of two champions. It is most unjust. We were under the impression that your age line would keep up younger, younger contestants. Dumbledore said, "Cut off his steely smile, still in place." Though his eyes were colder than ever. Otherwise, we would, of course, have brought along a wider selection of candidates from our school.